Hey guys, welcome back to the Designer Future podcast. I've got a very special guest on today. Reese. please go ahead and introduce yourself for me. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Reese Evans, aka EV Pro. I am a visual creator and becoming a digital strategist, uh, okay. live in Essex. Um, been 26 years old, been doing it full time for about probably six, seven, seven, eight years. Um, yeah, man, happy to be on the podcast. It's nice. I've, it's nice to be a guest yeah. on somebody else's podcast and not uh, not be like presenting it the other way yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's a nice little nice little flip. To, uh, tell everyone a little bit about your podcast as well before we get into things. Cool. So I meant to get it off the ground three years ago, but oh. I started it. I did like three, four episodes. Then summer comes. I'm really busy through summer. I go on tour with artists. Then I tried to pick it back up again and I'm doing okay. I'm managing like one yeah. a month at the minute. The, the problem is I'm just such a perfectionist. So <clears throat> although I could should just do them and put them out, I want them to look good. I want the sets to yeah. look good. Try to get some good guests that just provide a lot more. People won't, probably won't know them, but just try to provide a lot of value. Um, my SEO is terrible because I don't come up in any searches, but I think the content that I provide is quite valuable because there's, a lot of people that are in the position that I'm in mm -hmm. and there's not many people. So there's lots of people that are in the position that I'm in or want to have the job that I do, but the people, there's not many people who are giving the advice, if that makes sense. So sure. they're giving the advice for like, Oh yeah, if you want to go do this, go do this. Like, yeah, that's cool. But you're not in the UK. You're not our age. And that's not how you would necessarily do it. Yeah. Um, and and I think all... it's nice just to, common ground. Like, I mean, you like we're the same sort of age, like mm. we're the same like generation bracket. So the way that we deal with things and the way that we talk about stuff and work our way through things will be totally different to say how someone 10 years older would. And I think that's when it, when you can relate to somebody who's in the same position as you, same age or whatever, then it just hit, it hits home a little bit better. But that's the whole aim of the podcast. And hopefully over time I'll do more and more and get a proper setup in place. But yeah, it's a, it's one of them things. It's a slow burner, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. I enjoy them. But you're doing it for the right reasons, right? So you're doing it to inspire and motivate other people, which is is great. So it doesn't matter how great your SEO is at this point, because you're going to keep doing it regardless. That's that's amazing. Literally man. that. Um, okay, cool. So let's get on to like the technical side of things. Um, as a digital crowd, firstly, just um. Go ahead and drop a couple of the people. You said you go you you go on tour with artists and stuff, so you know I've got to draw some of those names out from you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what sort of like no, people cool. have you been? You know, even at past experiences, some of the opportunities that you know this whole digital life has created for you. Yeah. So main person I work with at the minute is MK Mark Kinchin. Uh, most people have you've definitely heard of his tracks at some point. Yeah. Uh, DJ Popping producer. Up, <laughs> yeah, that done, that does a lot of uh, does like a lot of festivals and stuff like that. So I worked with him, uh, Nathan Dore. Uh, it, it's actually funny. So I filmed a lot of artists before they popped. So just to reel them straight off, that uh, was you. Stormzy, <laughs> Stormzy, yeah, Stormzy, Skepta. Oh no. Um, all sorts, man. There's so many, like, like even Joel Corey. Like I worked with Joel closely for like two, he's three years. Blown up recently, and, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's blown was... up massively now. I used to speak with him when we were like we were both like um at like optimum nutrition events as well like back when he yeah, was like yeah, solely, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was solely just solely like fitness, fitness. Yeah. yeah yeah just like fitness and did DJing doing, on the side mate it's sick to see that he's doing his thing and he's you know, he's flying up it's nice man like I remember me and him driving to like gigs and him being like yeah I just want to switch my music style up I want to do this I was like you can do it man and four years five years later here he is so yeah it's great I love to see that I'm like. I'm a static for him. I'm fucking buzzing. I saw him a few weeks ago, uh, just before lockdown, and it was like, yeah, we were just like, it's mad. How have yeah. we both got to where we are? Like, it's just so sick. That's that's. I think as well, like when you when you have those type of people around you as well, it becomes such an easier process. Um, cool. So the next thing I wanted to ask you, being you know like a digital creator, obviously you're using a lot of equipment on a day to day basis. If I really broke things down and I asked you, if I was to take three apps away from you tomorrow, what would those three apps be that you would literally struggle? Struggle with WhatsApp. That? Cool. Massively WhatsApp. I use WhatsApp for literally everything. I've got, <clears throat> I mean, just promise I've got 
so many different clients or there's different parts of teams that were all in different countries. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp's the one thing that I, I can even send videos for and all. So that's invaluable. Um, probably, I guess Instagram because I get some of my money for it, but I hate to fucking say that. Yeah. Personally, if it fucked off, I wouldn't care. I honestly wouldn't care if it fucked off. But the fact that it helps me make a living. It's yeah. A bit, can't, yeah, you um, can't too much. Yeah, it's one of them. Uh, and last one would be, it's a file sharing called Box. It's a bit like Dropbox. Okay. Um, but it's like the, the best file sharing fucking Never heard of there is. It's made. It's, it's, not, it's a little bit more expensive than... Um, uh, Dropbox, but just the usability on it. I, the, I hate a Dropbox lot of record, as well. Yeah, a lot of a lot of record labels use it. Um, it's just everything about it. it's quick, it's easy. Like the layout's perfect. Like you can just the way you save stuff to your phone. Like, especially for me, like I edit on a Windows PC and then have to get it to my phone. So if unless I'm editing on my Mac, I can just airdrop it. But if not, because mm -hmm. obviously oh. Apple Apple ain't gonna sell that fucking airdrop to Windows. So no way. No way. It's so cool. So one thing I'd like to, I'd like to just paint a picture with you right quickly. Imagine someone's landed on this video out of complete coincidence. They've typed in how to make money online, right? And they've, they've landed on this video. What would be one resource, whether it's, you know, like a YouTube channel or a specific YouTube video, a book, uh, you know, some sort of information, a course, what would be like a, a starting point for you? If you was to tell yourself, if you had literally been in that starting point and type in how to make money online or how to start a digital business of, of some sort. It's going to sound so, so cliche, but uh, you probably know what I'm going to say. Gary V, mate. Yeah. Just, okay, cool. <clears throat> the, re the reason I say is, so I first started off, I didn't want to use YouTube channels. I still don't really that much to this day. I, just, I, I did a lot of driving in between gigs. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want to get into podcasts. I was fed up and used listen to music. So I thought, all right, let's let's try the podcast. I think I even I don't I think I found him by putting in on Spotify like business podcast or something like that. Really? <clears throat> and just by found it and was hooked. Started playing it and <clears throat> I would just consume it while I was driving. And subconsciously, you know, it's rewired my brain. Like mm -hmm. you just hear stuff and you're taking note without sort of realizing. So I would do something and I'll be like, no, do that because you heard it on the podcast two weeks ago and it actually makes sense when you think about it. And I think gradually, like you could, I've, I've literally, I've legitimately rewired my brain just through, I'm not saying I believe in everything he says. Yeah. And I think his approaches could be different in certain things, but like listening to the keynotes, like it's all about listening, what, what tech company's going to be the next one. It's listening about, when he does the Q and A and someone presents a situation that you can relate to yeah. and then he gives an answer on it and you're like, yo shit, why? One thing that I always remember from his, uh, one of his podcasts is like, if you run if you run a restaurant, how can you tell the difference about who's been there before and what time they've been there? You're not really going to know realistically. So what do you do? So when someone asks, you come in, oh, is this your first time here? They say, yes. You give them a green napkin. Okay, so you know that every single person who has a green napkin on their table, it's their You're first time. You extra, want to give them the yeah. best. Exactly. Mm. Got that little bit extra effort. When they come the second time, you give them a purple napkin. Okay, this is their second time. You also then at that point give them a card and say, hey, if you come one more time, we'll give you this dessert for free. Okay, cool. So then people who have come back and then asked for the dessert for free, you know this is their third time. And it was something like by the fourth or fifth time, you've got them as a customer for life. Mm -hmm. And all it was was just changing the fucking colour of a napkin. Yeah, so I hope I can swear, by the way. I love it. It's like, but all it is, is literally just the caption of a napkin. That's it. Yeah. And by putting in, and that's what it made me realise, just putting in little steps here and there can it, create it, such a difference. It is though. It's like little stuff like that. It's like the, the simplest little system or a software could literally save hours and hours and hours of time within your business, or it can do the complete opposite and it can make a customer's experience be from like you're the worst person I've ever worked with to you are the best Literally. person I've worked with. And I'm talking about like four, $4 a month systems and stuff like that, like programs and softwares you use. Crazy stuff. Um, um, that's <clears throat> really cool though, man. And uh, I love how you started from <clears throat> the podcast side of things, considering like mm. he's, he's very much so like video content as well. 
I never really had like I didn't I don't have a big attention span. So even people like Peter McKinnon and like who uh, I don't know if you follow photography, but like he's a big yeah, guy yeah. in the YouTube photography space. I don't have time to watch his videos. A two minute Tuesday that's fourteen minutes. I know you're doing it for the ad money. Realistically, the only value I want is going to be in this bracket. And I'll search. It got, I got to a stage where I was searching through eighty percent of videos, which is why my tutorials when I did them, they're short and sweet. I don't. I'm not being funny, mate, but no one's earning great money for YouTube at the minute. Like. Mm -hmm. And not just that, I'd rather put more videos out and then people then just come to me in general and be a proper fan of me yeah. rather than have to sit through 14, 14 minutes, 14 minutes yeah. of stuff which they could have got in two minutes. Like, it's just not worth it, man. Mm. <clears throat> so with you, with you personally, like, this is just a general question for me going sort of off of my, my general questions. You now personally, what is it like for you um, creating content for clients versus creating your own personal content. Because I know when I first got into, I don't really, I don't really, like I know you're like a, like a push, when push comes to shove, like you're a video creator, like you go out and make amazing content yeah, for yeah. other people. Whereas me, like I got into that sort of realm and I, I personally felt the fact that I was like, I love, I love making content for other people, but I want to like, I want to make my own content. So what does that feel like for you? Do you feel like sometimes your own content get like gets like a like a back seat is that okay with you or does that sort of play up on your mind as well yeah it plays it plays on my mind all the time to be honest um probably it's a conversation i had with my mate the other day is that i am such a perfectionist when it comes to my personal branding and mm. to the point where like i'm just i'm trying to rewire my, my head at the minute just to put more out like I watch all this stuff about Gary Vee and I, I see so many creators. Documenting and just, creating and all that. Yeah, they just they're just putting the content out. And I'm when I'm actually looking at them, like their back I haven't even paid attention to their background, but I spend two and a half hours setting up yeah. a lighting setup. And it's like, does it actually really matter that much? Mm -hmm. And it's at the minute in my head I think it does. And I think part of it does. I think it's <clears throat> it's a leverage. It's a sure. It's me it's finding that balance of okay, this video the quality is good enough that I'm happy to put it out, but you know, it could be better, but it doesn't matter because it's the ratio is sort of even rather than like this. And yeah, I think for me with personal branding, I, I went through a stage before I got as busy as I was. I just used to shoot loads of stuff on my GoPro and just put it out. I didn't do that well. And it would probably but now if I get them big shows, I really try to cap, excuse me, I really try to capitalize on it mm -hmm. and get put a GoPro in my mouth, get the content I can and, I sort of know now more a little bit what works and how I can do stuff. And I, I also, <laughs> by putting such good behind the scenes video, then puts more pressure on myself to do better next time because obviously I want, yeah, of course. Yeah, I can't you. have an amazing yeah. festival with loads of pyro and then put up a shot. That's just me running across stage. It doesn't have yeah. the same hit. So I think that's hard. I should, the, the time time is massive, but the, the perfectionist thing is I am such a perfectionist. I want everything to be top notch. I always wanted to mm. give the much I can, but I do feel deep down that I have the potential to be one of these big, uh, I, I, hate, I don't want to use the word influencer, but a big person within this space. Because as I said, there's not many people that are, you know, my age who are giving the Being advice and are short as snappy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah I'm like, in a situation. So I mean. Like, yeah, no, definitely. And I've watched like though, like the Peter, Peter McKinnon's and stuff like that. And I think, yeah, personally, and I think your personality as well is something that if you do make those short, snappy things, they're yeah, definitely they'd be unbelievable. Um, the next sort of thing I like to go over is all about um, the sort of like mindset side of things in terms of when did you know? You, obviously, where was you working before? How did you sort of? make that, that that sort of switch into sort of being your own boss you know calling your own hours having to dedicate yourself to those specific hours what was that transition sort of like for you yeah um the easiest way is me just to lay out in a dead simple timeline yeah, yeah, so i started <clears throat> i've always been interested in film so when i was in school i had a camcorder like i'd film the family holidays it all originally stemmed basically dad would always film every Christmas, put a camera up on a tripod and it sort of stemmed from there. I'd then make little like videos on Sony Vegas with my mates down the local park, entered some YouTube competitions while I was in school and so on. 
fast forward, scrap that, I do DJing for two years. Then I go to leave my sixth form and go to uni. And at that stage, uh, sorry, leave sixth form to go to college. And I do a TV and film course. From there, I hire out the equipment and start doing it part-time as a side hustle whilst you're working a job. I go abroad, do a couple of summers abroad, come back, same scenario again. Get a job, do college, do video. Then hit the time, sack one of the jobs off, work at JD and do thing. Before I got to JD, I got sacked from six jobs in six months. So I just sort of realised, yeah. you know, I'm not made for this nine to five. I can't what do was it. The, I, what was the job sort of doing? Like what industry? Everything, everything you can everything think of. So uh, window cleaning, RBS call centre, banking, uh, cold calling, um, yeah. delivery driving. Like, I mean, delivery driving wasn't so bad. I, that was like minimal, but I was even a doing like PR for nightclubs at one stage, um, like flyering. And it was just sort of realizing that, you know, okay, so I had basically a summer coming up. I knew I'd work guaranteed for the summer. So I go to Mali, I work there. I woke up one morning in Mali and I was like, I'm not, and I was doing video, videos at the time. I'm filming for the nightclubs out there. I'm like, I'm not going back to my job. That's just, that's going to happen. I had a bit of money saved up. I had about two, three grand saved up. And I was like, I am not going back to my full-time job. I'm going to just do what I can. Let's just, I'm out here with all these like DJs are flying over. Like, let's just network, see what I can do. So come back from there, try to network as much as I can. Went to, ended up sort of basically utilizing the contacts that I'd made in the summer to get me gigs, in a lot of gigs up north in Leeds, Manchester, uh, Cardiff. These okay. then built up and continued on and built onto more work. That led on to work in my bay. By that next summer, I was, living in Leeds I think I had gigs in I had gigs in every resort I think I'd got gigs in Iron Apple, gigs in Zanti gigs in Marbella Malia Maga yeah it was it was the year I did everywhere uh, even Cavos yeah. I even did Cavos and stuff like that and Sunny Beach so I'd literally hit every single resort in one summer Big like man. I was doing what a DJ does I was travelling literally do a gig the fucking camera go, to, go yeah go to the airport and I think I was probably not the first person, but especially in this modern age, one of the only videographers who was actually bouncing resort to resort mm -hmm. to resort. But I was, it was all work. Like I was, I was getting partying at some time. Yeah, weren't no, yeah, weren't no pleasure involved really. It was hustling, like, really. The, the, yeah. The gigs to go to Marbella were, they were well paid gigs, but I would have to fly from Greece and they don't do direct flights. So that meant I'd have to fly to, so I would finish working in Malia. 6 a.m. catch the bus to the airport. Catch 8 a.m. 8 a.m. flight. Gets worse. 8 a.m. flight oh, to yeah. uh, like Czech Republic. Wait in Czech Republic for eight hours in the airport, no hotel. Then fly to Marbella. Then do the Marbella shows. Then fly back. Do that whole trip back. So I would spend more time getting there and back than I was in the actual country. And it was just like I mean, obviously that wasn't ideal. And, and I only did that for one summer, but. And you know what? Do you know what I think as well? Like when you say about like, oh, people see like your content and they're like, oh, this is sick. Like I want to do this. Blah, blah. I want to be in a nightclub. Like filming everyone. Blah blah. Like they don't see that side of things as well. Yeah. Like, it's not all fun and games. It all might. It all might look it in that thirty second to a minute clip. But there's yeah. a lot that goes behind the scenes. So no, that's that's really cool. When how did that sort of stuff first come about? I know you said you started in in somewhere, and you know that obviously then led to this other other thing. Is it always been sort of like word of mouth or have you ever had to sort of like go out and sort of look for these sort of people or have they always come to you? Uh, it's been a combination. Uh, every scenario that I get put in with someone new, I, I view them as a potential client. Not as in that I try to sell to them, but as in they could, I've had it so many, so many jobs have come off word of mouth because of someone else they know. They don't even know the quality of my work, but they're like, oh yeah, Reese is a videographer. He can do it. Um, I, did a, did a job the other week for someone and um, it's like before they'd even seen like the end result it's like actually I'm going to change that because otherwise that's going to sound really bad because of the whole lockdown thing um, so I, I'll just go from here go on <laughs> so I did a so like a prime example is I, I done a job for a client and then they rebooked me for something else before they'd even seen the end result and the only reason I can think to that being is because obviously, yes, they may have seen previous work, mm -hmm. but the way that I've dealt with that on the shoot and the way that I presented myself and just being with the person, I always, I never, I never put anybody on a pedestal. Like I don't, 
care how big a celebrity they are. I always just talk to them like a normal human being. And I think yeah. people, people like that, appreciate that and respect that because so many people put big CEOs and put all these big people on such a high pedestal. They're like, oh my God, like, let's have a selfie. Oh my God, like, I love yeah, you. I like You've that. changed my life. And I'm just like, yeah. oh, you are, mate. Like, I'm Reese. Nice like to meet that. you. That's, and that's I, I don't tell them what I do. I wait till they ask because yeah. then they want to know. They're then paying attention to it. Yeah. Um, and in my spare time, I've gone lots into that body language, how you should stand, how you should talk to people, like let them, as I say, the whole example with what you do for a living, I'll ask them first, oh, what do you do for a living? Because I know, not just that one I'm listening and finding out information yeah. about them, they're going to flip that and say, oh, what do you do, by the way? Of and it's like, oh, yeah, I do, I do videos. And it's like, oh, I was needing someone. Yeah, I've really built yeah, a rapport yeah. up. And it's not yeah. sell, sell, sell. So, yeah. No, I completely agree. And I think it does go back to that old sort of saying that people buy from people. Like, no matter how 100%. good... 100%. I mean, no matter how good, how good your videos are, like, if they like you as a person, like, that's going to always top the quality of your videos. And your, your, the videos of your quality are obviously going to match that as well. So, no, that's, that's really sick. Um, one thing I like to ask, this is more so relevant to uh, some of, like, I know, like, your... You're going out, you're going to physical locations all the time. And obviously, um, you're like the first like video editor, like video creator that I've sort of had on here. So this is, could be a good question because you might be like, what the fuck? Um, have you ever used click funnels before? Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to be like... Um, no, because I want to see is, your is it reaction. Bad? Is it no, bad? Not, I don't that, even know what this yeah, is. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. You don't know what it is, so that's why I love it. That's why I'm I love like, it. I'm starting to learn about funnels now because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. teaching myself how to do like I know how to do basic Facebook ads, but I'm really like trying to delve deep and how I to. Think you, I think you would absolutely clean up on Facebook ads. To be fair, well, I'm starting. I've always I've run ads on Instagram for like the last two years, just within the app, and worked out what's worked, what hasn't. Um, you know, and I, I run a lot of, well, not a lot, I run some artist social media accounts as well. So oh, I have oh. to be very involved in that space um, and be aware of what's happening. Obviously, it's always a change in landscape. And I really want to go into sort of digital consulting eventually. Like that's a little side thing I want to work on. Oh, cool. And I feel like I've got like, let's say 70% of everything. And that last bit is I can't really start oh, giving know. people advice on ads yeah. If I haven't set up a Shopify store and done it myself, because it's all the little intricacies that I'm going to learn through that and do it that way. And I'm building a little side house a little minute and it's cool. I like it. And I, I like it because just standing in the, with the whole lockdown, I could just imagine you're at the window literally. with the camera, like looking out the window. Not even camera related. <laughs> it's totally, it's like not camera related. Oh, that's what I mean. All. Like where you can't go outside and film stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at the minute it's, it's yeah. Hi friends. <laughs> And so at the minute, it's sort of, it's, it's kept me busy. The days are still hard at the minute, but it's been nice to sort of put my energy into saying else and be like, all right, okay, let's see how far I can build this brand without anyone knowing it's me just through Facebook ads and without pushing from my own socials. So I think it'll be really interesting to see sort of, you know, how I can develop it. And yeah, I'm, it's just a little side hustle thing. Like nice. I'm setting it up now. So hopefully in the end, it will be semi-automated. So yeah. we'll see, we'll see. Wicked, wicked, cool. So, sorry, I just wanted to touch on that little thing that you mentioned in between of you actually run some of these guys' accounts as well. So, yeah. is there anything else that you sort of do like that behind the scenes that someone, if they just see, oh, yeah, Reese is a vit uh, videographer, like, is there any other little things that you do like that? There is loads. People would have no oh. idea. So, a, a lot of it's even with, like, um, with MK's team. So, although obviously, yes, I'm the videographer, I'm the photographer, there's lots of stuff that I deal with on the back end uh, in terms of digital media. So, you know, if we get requests come in for certain, you know, dealing with promoters, dealing with the dark ads, um, dealing with ads in general, dealing with uh, certain copywriting or that's going out on the post, not obviously with articles, they've got PR people for that. Um, but dealing with the visual and the dig and sort of like the digital strategy, if that makes sense. So I'd be like, okay, look, like prime example, I'm like, look guys, you know, we need to get on TikTok like this has to be done now although we don't have much content we can post at the minute because we're not on shows we have the last year of content that i can chop up and cut up and that we can flip and yeah. i said to them look yeah, they, were, they were some of the team were a bit like i don't know i don't know if that's sure i said okay look just trust me on this and in the first week 
we get two videos go viral with over 150k views and you know but obviously followers don't matter as much on tiktok but it's yeah like it, it's me it, it's gone sick like i couldn't have had a better start and it's sort of that moment where you're like look i I told you. I so. of, I, yeah. I put, it's not even that, but it's, I put a lot of time and effort into it. Like one of my mates, he's he works. Uh, he works in like the industry, and I said to him, and he's like, he, the work he does is insane, and his industry is so niche. It's a uh, it's like lighting production, like pr- like production of events. Like it's so niche. Like you can target people so easily and pop off. Like you mm-hmm. already have connections with the biggest companies, and the biggest companies are already following your work. And I was like, I can flip your account around in literally like two weeks. And we were away in America and I said to him, look, put this up, put this caption, do this, do that. Mate, he got like three brand deals off of two posts. Whoa. And I'm like, mate, this is what I can do now. Pay, pay, oh, shit. I was like, oh. pay, I was like, I was like, I was like pay me 500 pound a month and I can get you a brand deal every month. But yeah, it's sort of, um, I just said to him like, like he, cause he's like, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. Yeah. Same thing's happened with my family's business in, um, in this whole lockdown, mm-hmm. they're like they're still allowed to be open. So I said, look, this is our prime time. We can capitalize on this, like online sales, deliveries. We can do this. Rebuilt the website. Started doing Facebook ads, two pound a day. Yeah, we've basically free folded. I think them this month's earnings, like considering it's a bloody lockdown. Yeah, obviously that's going to level out. But mm. like all of a sudden, there's now that like, the Facebook page has nearly tripled in likes. The engagement has skyrocketed to a number that's not even worth like. The, to what it was originally yeah and all of a sudden i said even if they don't buy that's now another f- two three thousand people that now know about us that now know where we are and so it's all about brand awareness and mm-hmm. i feel that although i don't put all of my own practices into my own brand just because of time i feel like i have so much to offer other brands and that i I honestly feel like, you know, obviously it's a learning curve. I've still got so much more to learn, but I really do feel like I have a lot of value to add to a lot of people's personal brands and also their business brands. Sure. So, and yeah. and do, you, do you sort of feel like, like even what you said about like you're like a perfectionist with the content you put out, but do you feel like when you speak to someone else, you still feel like you've got so much value there, even if you're not doing it for yourself, there's so much knowledge for you to give to that person. Absolutely, yeah, mm. and I I do it subconsciously as well. I remember yeah. uh, an example that pops to mind is we were me and my mate. We were leaving Ibiza. His mate was dropping us off in his car or whatever, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm trying to do this, this, and this with social, but it's not working." And me just casually in the back just went, "Oh yeah, but it's because you're posting at these times, and if you use these hashtags that have 50k to 100k, and then 100k to 200k." but only put a couple that have a million a post because you're just getting saturated and then share that post to your thing. You're naturally going to see it build better. And I was like, people pay for that information. For that information. Yeah, and I'm just like, is. just reeling it off my head. So that's why I really feel like that's like, I, I want to do it one-on-one. It's not just like a, a massive free for all, like do an ebook or something like that. Cause I don't no. feel like it comes across like every business and every brand is so different. So I'm sort of, gradually sort of managing my mate who's a dj and i really think that you know he he's got so much talent and i i think with his expertise from his side and mine we can really sort of build something that's just going to be like so strong and when that moment hits when he gets that one track that bangs Mm -hmm. we're going to be so ready for it and we're going to be unstoppable prime example is like james hype and his video guy them guys are so on it and so clued on like prime example is Okay, lockdown, all gigs are cancelled. They start doing live stream setups proper. They're getting 2,000 concurrent viewers. They're doing a live stream a day. Like, this is a DJ. Like, this is mental. Like The comment yeah, section's yeah. going nuts. Like it, It's insane. And I've, I think a lot of people still doubt the power of social, the power of digital. Um, but I think a lot of people doubt us. I say young bucks. Mm. You know, under 30 years old, people think, no, you haven't got enough experience in that and all this. Like, we grew up in this space. Yeah, like, exactly. We know it. And guess what? The people who are younger than us, they're going to know it even better. But the whole aim is to stay on top of it. They, as already, much as we they can. already do know it better than us. Literally. So that's, the thing, that's the thing as well. Like, um, I don't know if you've heard of, do you know, like what BNI is? It's like a I've local, it. it's like a local business meeting or whatever, you know, like a networking event, basically. Yeah. 
and um, they do like a weekly event where they meet up essentially and they like talk about their business and it's, a, it's like a referral sort of thing. And um, since they've been in lockdown, they've obviously had to use Zoom for their business meetings. So now what, what I've basically done is I've gone on and I'm now like teaching a live class for that BNI group, which is sick. And as well, like, like you said before, like I'm, I'm going over so much basic stuff, sharing my screen. And by the end of it, they're all literally like, what you can at what you can do that like what what that's like, crazy it's so like, like, the stuff that we see is every day day to day yeah so, so when people don't know nothing about it they're like what yeah <laughs> like, it's mad. and as well when you think about like even that because me personally like i i love i, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and i've, I've never done something for me me i want to get into like public speaking but i've never done like same um, same yeah. man but I've never done like a Zoom call and there's been like loads and loads of people in there. Mm. So, you know, like I'm doing it and then you see like everyone's faces at the top and I'm I just like, though. forget that I was speaking to like all of these people. Um, but then after, like I was speaking about a certain topic and after I had like five of them email me directly like, oh, everything you, you showed looked amazing, blah, blah. But I'm not going to be able to remember that and I'm not going to be able to do it. Would you be able to help mm. me with it? And I was like, I just... I just got like seven people to email me directly Mad and they, they know exactly where and yeah so seven potential that, clients yeah, sat seven right potential there. clients from just being and I was like but for that sort of thing as well I think where the world's going now like why would they ever do an in-person meeting ever again do you know what I mean like what literally why? they they can get people from all over the world with that they're not limited to location exactly like if anything that they should be and yourself as well, taking full advantage of that. Like if it were me, I'd be recording them Zooms, getting that up on your YouTube channel. Just let it sit there. Just get a call from now and just hey. let it sit there and just... And that's what I was going to say. And that's what I've done. I've literally recorded those. They're an hour live training sessions and I've now got people coming through to YouTube as well. But going back to that, you saying like people from all over the world, like I got my first ever client um, through Zoom, like using uh, Upwork. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, nah. Upwork's like a freelancer website. Um, the the good thing about it is like people put job postings up there, so it's not like yeah. you're going to people. Someone would say yeah, like yeah 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 gotcha. I need help with social media, and then you just like apply for the job sort of thing. Right. Um, so yeah, I got my first one on it. So me, it's always been natural, and I've always even like local clients if they come to mm. me and they'll say like, can you pop into the to the office and all stuff like that. I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like what? <laughs> like this before lockdown and all that. They're like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. Uh, they're like, yeah, but it's only around the corner. I'm like, yeah, but it's gonna take me half an hour to get to you guys. I'm gonna, it's gonna be in there for an hour speaking to you. It's gonna take me half an hour to get back. Like, how about we just both save each other's time? Let's jump on a Zoom call. And th this way as well. I, this way, I think it's so powerful. Where you can share your screen. Like, I can literally walk you yeah. through exactly what I'm talking about. I can't. If I'd done it and I bring my laptop and I was showing you things, I don't really want you having you over my shoulder. Like we can yeah, record yeah, it, we can upload it and have it there for you to use all the time. Um, cool, Reese. With that being said, like the last couple of minutes or so, I know we've gone over forty minutes or so. Um, oh, geez. What would be like your your biggest tip for a like a social media newbie or someone that doesn't even know what they want to do? Because, like you said, there is so many ways that you can make money online. Um, yep. You know, we're both proving different ways, and that's why I, was, I thought it'd be great to have you on here. Um, but yeah, what, what would be your sort of first step? Well, more, think, so, more so like, uh, yeah, some like, not necessarily your first step, but in the grand scheme of things, I know you've obviously progressed a lot from where yeah. you started as well. I think it's really important that, I mean, it's just knowing what you love to do. For me, filming was always natural, but, mm. uh, you know, a lot of people, my mate's the same, he doesn't know what he wants to do in life. I've always said to him, he should have become a professional gamer because... No word of a lie, that guy is the sickest kid on call. Of, on, honestly, like, I'm not just gassing him. I've said to him, I was like, you, like, apply for Activision. Like, even if you just work in that space, you'll be interested in it. Like, you need to do something you're interested in. And now, finally, he really likes flying drones. And he's got a drone, and I'm yeah. teaching him how to do bits and pieces. and telling him, look, you've got to build a brand around it. You can build a brand. Uh, even if you let the drone do automatic stuff. Like, if you have a brand there, you'll get jobs. Um... I think it's just, just finding what you obviously have a passion for and then see how you can turn that into a job. Um, I mean, people like Gary Vee and all sorts of people say it all the time, that you can turn anything into a job. And of course you can. And obviously there's different ways of doing it. And 
it's yeah it's tough i mean if you don't know obviously what you what like you do, doing yeah. i think deep down personally that obviously i've never been in that situation so i don't know but I feel like deep down, you always know what you love. To, like there's something you know you love doing. And if not, then you need to test a lot. You need to find what you like to do. The, sorry, the one thing that, yeah, to, to sort of go on what you said there, I had someone on before and they said, it, like, if money wasn't an object, what would you be doing tomorrow? And then it's like, okay, so how can you work out for you to be able to do that every day and to bring in some sort of income doing so? And as well, if that's genuinely what you want to do, then you haven't got to be earning 200k a year to to be happy with it because you're going to be happy right um literally and oh just, just quickly to add on, and well, if your answer if your answer to that question is that oh i just have a day off and sit in front of the tv on netflix then, yeah, then i'll be totally right. honest then then well no, it's, then probably the entrepreneur entrepreneur life isn't for you like yeah stick the, the, the night the night the night yeah <laughs> the nine to five is more suited towards you and Definitely. you know there's no there's nothing wrong with that you can earn a lot of money for it having them hours and we shouldn't really put down people that are doing that because if that's what someone enjoys and that's what they're happy doing. Then, as you say, if you're happy doing it, then it's cool. If you're not happy in a job, then exactly. look to see how you can change it. And that's, that's the one thing I, I say with, with that sort of stuff is like, if you're happy in your nine to five, then fair play. But don't come to me and say, oh, like this is the one thing I always, ha- I always hate. It's like, oh, I can't wait for, for Friday. Like, <coughs> like, get a weekend off, blah, blah. I was like, what, you're literally wishing your week away for and i was like what do you do on a the weekend they're like oh, i don't know we might go to the pub like oh, i watch the football in the mornings it's like mm. yeah but what you're wishing your whole like your work can't be that bad can it and then they're like they're like oh yeah but i'm making this much making this much i'm like right and but you're literally saying that you can't wait yeah. a whole week you're to not go. happy what's the point yeah i was like i would rather be earning fucking 100 grand less than that just to just to have a smile on my face. Right, cool. Sorry, the last question I want to ask you because I think it's going to be pretty relevant for yeah, this cool. audience um, because of this audience that sort of watches this stuff. A big thing I talk about is um, like my team and how we sort of outsource certain tasks. Obviously for you, I'd like to get your perspective on it because like you said, you're speaking with other people's teams and also you have so much pride within your within your product and your service that you're not necessarily going to go on Fiverr and find like a fucking video editor to edit one of these yeah, like yeah, M- yeah. MK edits. You know what I mean? So what did, what does your process look like that? How have you have you ever sort of dabbled in trying to find video editors to take some of the work off of you? Yeah, I have. Um, fun fact: I tried to run a cre- or tried to run a cre- agency, a creative agency with my mate. Um, it flopped for multiple reasons. It crashed within about six or seven months. Okay. Uh, one of the main reasons was because we couldn't find people we could trust. Videographers, people messing up, people not following briefs. Um, and that was a big realisation to me that no one is ever going to do the, the job as good as you would or in the way that you would. Um, and to me personally, it's actually become a massive thing why I don't really recommend that many people now. There's, I recommend one or two people just because you recommend people and then if they do bad then it looks bad on me. Mm. Um, maybe obviously that's probably something I have to learn to change going forward. And, uh, um, but I mean, even, even with like working in teams with stuff like MK is just realizing what I'm responsible for. Obviously I want to try to do the best I can on every, everything. I want everything to be amazing. Mm-hmm. And realizing that, nah, like sometimes you just got to stay in your lane be responsible for what I've got to do and do that to the best of my ability and just make sure you're covered and then let other people deal with their thing. If you believe there's a way that it can improve, suggest it, but you have to suggest it in the right way because if you start pissing people off and telling other people how to do their job, it's going to be, it's not going to come off well. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Well, firstly, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, sick, man. Um, obviously, this show is called Designer Future. I'm invested in, like you said, people doing well. There's nothing more I enjoy than watching someone else succeed. And, you know, to be a part of that journey as well is always great. So I'd love to have you. I'll always keep the track, keep the date that I, I um, interview people. I'd love to have you on, like, next year just to really speak Absolutely. about your goals, see what you've got. So with that We'll being do it in fact, person, man. We'll do it in person as well. We'll do it we'll yeah, do it in a proper, yeah, yeah, proper yeah, podcast definitely. set out, man, for sure. Definitely. Make sure you start setting those lights up now, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They might be ready in time. <laughs> um, no, sorry. With that being said, um, just, like, talk to me. You know, what, what does Reese look like next year? What's he achieved by that time? What are you hoping for? I know it sounds really... It's a question, a question I ask people, and I never know what I would answer. Um, 
I don't know, man. I, I really want to start to. There's lots of little side hustles that I want to start doing that can potentially become not enough. Just I just want to basically gain more, more sort of, uh, more. What would you call it? More avenues of income. So I want to start a little Airbnb thing, the digital strategy, build my personal brand. I want to get into public speaking. I was meant to do my first one literally weeks ago, but obviously because of Corona, I can't. Yeah, you do. And it got cancelled because of Corona. I was like... Literally. It's a nightmare. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I guess that, man. Just keep advancing. Keep, keep as you are, yeah. See what happens. I've just realised you just got to take everything as it comes and... I set myself little goals and just aim, aim to achieve them. But yeah, diff- different different streams of revenue, I guess. Love that. Perfect. Well, thanks again for coming on, man. Thank you guys thanks for having listening me, man. and watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care, guys. Bye. Peace, guys.